So these racks or shelves or store displays are gonna take a lot of two by twos. Each one of these units are gonna take eight two by twos and I'm making five of these displays. So my first step is gonna be batch cutting 40 two by twos down to the cut list that I've already made. I made sure to switch out the blade that came with this new chop saw. That way I got clean cuts without tear out on the back side or at least I was able to reduce that as much as possible. Then I just made sure to cut all of my pieces and keep them organized slash labeled so that I knew what I had already cut and where those pieces were. Each of the displays are gonna be 16 inches deep, so I do need a lot of 13 inch long pieces, and four of the displays are four feet wide. And quick tip, if you're batch cutting a lot of the pieces and you want them to be the exact same size, make sure and screw your saw down and set up a stop block. This really doesn't have to be complicated to be effective. And if you're interested in building some clothing racks like mine, I made sure to leave a link down in the description to free plans on my website. I'll also leave links to the materials and supplies I used. And to connect these two by twos together, I'm gonna be using the new Craig 720 Pro that they sent me. This has a really cool upgrade. It automatically adjusts to whatever material thickness you're using, whether it's inch and a half, three quarter, or everything in between. So let's test it out. They're not sponsoring this video, but I will give you my feedback. One thing right off the bat that Craig does, which is convenient, is they print where you should put the stop collar on the drill bit, depending on what material thickness you have. And today's project really lends itself well to pocket hole joinery. It has a lot of visible frame pieces, but they're always capped with a shelf or are low to the ground where the connections can be hidden. Pocket holes are also going to allow us to connect the frame pieces at the same vertical point on the legs, which we wouldn't be able to do if we were drilling through the legs with a screw. And you'll see all of this come together. With each of the assemblies, I started by gluing and screwing the wide section of the frame together, and later we'll be connecting those with the 13 inch pieces. And I would absolutely recommend getting some right angle clamps before you start this project. They don't have to be expensive, mine are just some affordable ones from Harbor Freight, but they are essential in keeping your work pieces held square while you're screwing things together. Perfect. And with that, one frame piece is down and each shelf is gonna take two of these frames. Overall, I'm making five shelves, so there's gonna be a lot of repeated steps here, but I'm gonna try and not double down. I'll show the process all the way through and then kind of move on to the next step. I'll just assume you get what I'm doing. But here while we're getting started, I wanted to show you the different layouts of the shelves. I'll have two different pairs at 48 inches wide, but they're at different heights. One of them is at 90 and a half inches tall and the other is at 82 and a quarter. We're gonna be putting shelves on the smaller openings of the frames and the larger openings are where we'll hang items. And while I finish out this last large frame, I should note that I'm using coarse head pocket hole screws. Make sure and do that anytime you're using construction pine, not the fine head. Those are for plywood and hardwoods. So there you have it. 10 individual frames that we now need to connect with those 13 inch pieces that we cut earlier. Now this is why I used pocket hole screws. I'm able to connect my frame together at the same height on our leg pieces. If I was drilling a screw through these pieces, they would intersect and I wouldn't be able to accomplish it. This is why pocket holes are really convenient and we're gonna be able to hide all these connections like I mentioned earlier. And every single time I screwed a piece to this frame, I used my right angle clamps. That way I made sure that this whole thing got squarer and squarer the more pieces I attached. And it ended up working great. Check it out. I cut my shelves out of two sheets of three quarter inch radiata pine plywood. This is my go-to for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the most affordable cabinet grade plywood at big box stores like Home Depot. It also has the thickest face veneer of any cabinet grade plywood. Being able to sand a piece of plywood without the fear of revealing the plies underneath is really nice. It also gives me a little bit more margin for error, which is convenient because I use a lot of handheld power tools and I don't have the fanciest shop out there. The 12 inch speed square as always came in super handy whenever I was doing these cross cuts and after they were complete, I came back and I needed to cut out a space for all of the legs in the corner of each of my shelves. I used my circular saw to cut the straight lines where they met into the corner and then I came back with my flush trim saw to trim away the remaining wood. You could also use a jigsaw in this situation. 
I sanded the plywood shelf pieces with 150, then 220 grit sandpaper, making sure to round over the edges a little bit and then applied two coats of water-based polyurethane so that they stayed protected. After this dries, we'll assemble everything at the store, but first, I'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace. It's the best place for you to build your own website, online store, or just get a custom domain. And the best part is, is you need zero website building experience. I'm serious, if you can upload files, drag and drop text blocks, you are well on your way to a one-of-a-kind site. Squarespace's designer templates look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, no matter where customers find you. And they are packed with tons of great features, like no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store. Squarespace's Video Studio mobile app that allows you to create high-level, professional content for your website and social media. And do not forget, member areas where you can package premium content behind a paywall charging your members a monthly subscription fee. So to learn more and build your own website before you enter any of your credit card info, make sure and follow my link down in the description that is squarespace.com slash modern builds. And then when it's time for your website to go live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store or domain through Squarespace. Big thanks Squarespace, big thanks to you all. Now let's get back to the build. These shelves will have a new home at a store called Pisces in 29 Palms, which is right down the road from me from Joshua Tree. We wanted to see all of the shelves in place before we moved any further. I should also note we sanded the frame pieces to 220 grit, just like the plywood on the shelves. And here you can see how everything's going to lay out in this neat symmetrical way. And I really love this wall that sets behind the shelves. It's rustic, but has fresh white paint. Super pro. Upon client request, I spray painted the frames this nice gold color. It's not the shiniest, but it does have a little bit of glean to it. I do really like that you can see the wood grain still through the paint. And honestly, it kind of looks like a little bit of a stain, if I'm being honest. After the paint had a couple hours to dry, I came back with some wood glue and my nailer to connect everything together. And I really liked the combination of the radiata pine with this gold paint. It's not what I would have done right off the bat, my natural inclination is to always do a clear coat or simple finish, but I do like this look and it's gonna look really cool with all of the different clothes. I have to remember that it's not always about making the wood stand out, especially in this application. It's gonna be the items on the shelves. These brackets are the same ones that I use to hang my curtains in my living room. You can check out that renovation video down below. They fit a standard size closet rod dowel, which is about an inch and a quarter, and they look super fresh. Oh, and FYI, anywhere I wasn't able to screw into the plywood of the shelves, I added a two by four spine and they ended up blending out really nicely with a little bit of paint. There's electrical conduit running down the brick wall that these clothing racks are gonna set on. So I added a couple of pieces of plywood onto the backs of the shelves. That way they could make physical contact to the wall I'm also gonna be adding right angle brackets and drilling anchors into the wall. That way everything is connected. And with that, this project is complete. And welcome to Pisces. As you can tell, it is a store for women. There's a lot of loungewear, activewear, swimwear, cozy stuff now that it's winter. Just check it out if you're in town and I'll leave a link to their website below. Overall, I'm very happy with how everything came out. I think the look is really natural and pairs well with this brick wall behind it. It's clean enough, it's modern enough in the design, but then bringing out a little bit of earth tones really pairs with the ceiling and the rest of the space. And I know that this isn't the most complicated woodworking project out there, but I really do hope that if somebody finds this video and is planning on building some clothing racks for themselves, that this really helps. Be sure to follow me at Modern Builds on Instagram to stay up to date with me. And at the end of the day, the client was happy with everything. So this was a success.